So after three years of full-time travel, we're done. Well, at least for now. <laughs> Ultimately, we have ended our Pan American journey, and today's video is really just to share with you why we decided to do that, what was going on in our lives to kind of impact that decision, and then most importantly, at the end, give you a little sneak peek into what we have coming next. And don't worry, Jolene's not going anywhere. While we may not be fully living in her full time and full capacity on the road, she's still going to be very relevant to our Absolutely. future adventures. Absolutely. So what's next? We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road, first in our bus home Lady May, and then our rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us all through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho, and everywhere in between. From here, we took it international, spending three months in Baja and then putting our van on a ferry and spending another three months in mainland Mexico. But these three years, as exciting as they've been, they've also taken their toll. And today, we've decided to put the van in park. So as many of you know, we travel full-time with animals. So we have a five-year-old Beagle Itali and a just turned eight-year-old cat Fogarty. And when we were traveling out west in the bus and then the van, it was great. We were hiking on dirt roads all the time with Itali, Fogarty's an indoor-outdoor cat. And we never had any problems traveling with them. They both adjusted really, really well to this lifestyle. And we were really happy with that for most of the three years of our traveling. And we went down to Mexico. It was actually okay with them in Baja. And once we hit mainland, it got a little bit more challenging with them. Thought it would be like normal van life, but it wasn't. Yeah. Well, for Itali, it wasn't any fault of the travel per se. I guess there were pieces of it that yeah. made it tough. But the major thing was that he got sick and was eventually diagnosed with epilepsy while we were in Mexico. And the way that we live and the way that we travel is tough. It was really, Step really... Step on up, so it's even yeah. tougher on our animals. And it was great when he was a perfectly healthy, excited dog. He's an incredibly passive dog. Yeah. And there's street dogs everywhere. And it kind of became a bit of an annoyance with him because he kind of just rolls over and lays down and plays passive, plays submissive. And with street dogs, that's not always the best thing to do. Yeah. Well, Fogarty, um, very, very healthy cat, very amazing, loves life on the road. But in Mexico, we weren't able to let him out as much because of the street dogs, because of the cities that we were in. In the places we were staying, it was often like somebody's backyard or something that was like an ecotourism yeah. park. But we went to the one place and he was like, oh, your dog's fine, but don't let the cat out. Our guard dog will eat we'll it. We'll eat it. So. <laughs> Fogarty used to be able to go outside all the time traveling in the van and we were never felt like we were keeping him in but there was a couple weeks that he could not go outside in this van and this van's tiny so it yeah, wasn't we super downsized, fair to him. We <laughs> downsized into this van under the idea that he spends most of his time outside. We said okay like this isn't okay it's There's not fair to wrong. him we need to we need to make a change. We need to reevaluate and that's what we did so the animals were a huge huge decision in this it just wasn't fitting their lifestyle anymore. Something with van life that has always worn on me but has seemed to be more prevalent in the last, I would say, six months is missing friends and family. You meet so many amazing people on the road. You park up for a week or even two and you're just spending so much quality time with them. I always call it like dorm life college living because it's very much the same. Um, you kind of wake up, you have your coffee together, you have your food together. It's just such a nice experience. But then you always say goodbye. And to be honest, you don't always know when you're gonna see them again. And that is getting exhausting for me. I feel like missing my friends and family is coming so relevant in my life and saying goodbye over and over and over again it's just becoming so hard and not something I want to do as much anymore. I myself am also super close to my family and not seeing them as much has become very wearing. I feel like I'm starting to miss some family events and some family vacations that I want to be a part of. I want us all to be together more often. So our best form of van life is being down a dirt road, miles and miles away from anybody for a couple days at a time. And that wasn't really always the case. It was a bit more of a challenge when we hit Mexico. We were spending a lot more time at eco parks and people's backyards. 
And these eco parks are often community places yeah. where families hold parties and weddings, all sorts of beautiful, incredible events that luckily we were able to be a part of. I mean, like Absolutely. Mexican hospitality, we've said it before, we'll say <laughs> it again. It's incredible. It's the Whenever best. one of these wild parties were happening around us, people waved us over, grab a beer, sit down, here's Eat. food. Yeah, have Just, a good time. But that's a lot because all we're, yeah, we're always a little bit of an attraction us traveling around in these other countries in this bright colorful van we just felt like we never really had a break really had time to ourselves i mean like there's different parts of van life that are just weird like going to the bathroom and we have an outdoor shower people talk about intimacy in van life a lot <laughs> if you're not far out in the middle of nowhere it can be a little more of a hurdle yeah and when you have a canvas roof <laughs> Yeah, it, we're basically <laughs> in a glorified tent. So one thing that this like really showed us was like we knew from traveling out west that we love to be out in the middle of nowhere yeah. and very alone and by ourselves <laughs> and like have exposure to people in doses. <laughs> this kind of showed us how private we actually are yep. and how much of a homebody we often are and at the end of the day like this is a choice yeah thank you for putting this point because i feel like this point is so yeah relevant exactly <laughs> so like what we fell in love with was something that we weren't getting in in, in the most recent past of van life. yes this so. is all decisions like that we chose to be here and we chose to do so i feel like that's so so valuable. We're not giving up anything. We're just doing what feels right at the time. We've been on the road for three years. Almost three years. Not quite three years. <laughs> it's a in, long time. In road years, <laughs> that's a lot. Road years are like three times yeah. the amount. <laughs> and they're taxing. We felt ourselves reaching a point of burnout. I wouldn't say that we were fully yeah. there yet, but we were, we're close. we were equidistant <laughs> from the border of Guatemala and the border of the United States and had two weeks left on our Mexican visa. If we feel like we might be reaching a burnout point, should we be driving to Guatemala? Like all the stress of crossing borders in a new country and already the intensity of it all. And we were just kind of already like our, our glass was full. And while you're living such an, a glamorous, amazing life and, and you feel that too. Like I felt like I was in a movie sometimes. Like how am I even doing this? But I was like, done. I was exhausted. I was tired all the time and I just needed something different. Things can go very, very, very wrong in van life and thankfully and no then international van life. nothing to make this decision was because anything in particular went terribly wrong. Yes. But we were reaching this level of just burnout and stress where I didn't feel confident that if we had something major go wrong that our ability to react to that wrong would be right. Yeah. Because that's something I pride very much in us. I was just saying, we've always been very prideful of that, especially with van life. We're very like, being able to handle people. Yeah, just being able to handle bad situations when they happen. I think that's so important, um, especially with international van life, because yeah. there's so many other variables. Something really bad went wrong with the van. That is a whole ordeal like that is our house we now are translating with a mechanic trying to get parts in it's a big ordeal yeah so but we were at capacity i just didn't feel confident that if that happened that we were going to be able to handle it in the way that i think would have been needed so a unique part about van life is that every two to four days you're packing up and moving your home. And after a time, that gets to be a lot uh, because every moving day, it gets to be a little stressful. You're driving, you're packing everything down, collapse the roof down. And doing that every two to four days after a couple of years gets really, really wearing. And um, we were talking about this decision and what we were wanting to do. And one thing I said to Cass, I'd really like to not have to move my home and pack up my home every couple of days. I think I just want something where I have a little more stability. No matter how that could look like in what different living situation that could be, just a living situation where we weren't always moving our home. So something about us, and I think something that attracted us together originally, was that we both are always looking for new challenges and new changes and new new things to take it's on. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 
So we lived in the bus for about a year and a half and we've been living in the van for about a year and a half and now we're like, okay, well. What's next? <laughs> what's next? Let's, let's, let's challenge ourselves in a different way. Um, so that's what we're looking for right now. We really like learning new skills and just, we, we say that life is way too short and we like to live as many lives as we can in this one short life. So that is what we're gonna try to do. <laughs> Passing through, and heaven's not my home.